Hey everyone, welcome to the Paw Awareness Podcast and thanks for joining me. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. And also check us out at pawawareness.org and on Instagram at pawawareness underscore official. On Instagram, we are doing submissions for Pet of the Week where you can submit your foster pet and we'll pick one winner every month and we'll give $200 to their choice of charity or foster. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Paul Werner's Podcast. Today I have Alex Mormando with Treat With Compassion. I'm going to go ahead and let her introduce herself. Uh, she's a professional dog trainer, very specific type of dog trainer, and really excited to talk with her today. So go ahead, introduce yourself, and uh, tell me a little bit about you. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Alex, and I'm a certified professional dog trainer, and I work specifically for the most part with dogs that suffer from behavioral issues such as fear, aggression, reactivity, any sort of anxiety, separation anxiety, and uh, dogs that need a little bit of extra help after adoption, getting uh, kind of used to the human world. You know, I've, I've fostered my fair share of dogs, and sometimes you get dogs that are, you know, well behaved, but then you get these dogs that are, like you mentioned, separation anxiety is such a common issue I'm figuring out. And as well as these, this aggression, and it's a lot of work. What kind of sparked that for you to take that on, like to tackle that problem? Yeah, so I actually started as a volunteer at a local animal shelter, and I didn't think I was really going to get, I didn't go into it knowing that I was going to become a professional dog trainer. I kind of went into it as something to do to pass the time by. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do career-wise, but I knew I wanted to work with animals. So once I started to walk some of the dogs, I just noticed that the dogs that were in there the dogs that would be considered like bad dogs or aggressive dogs were actually just crying out for help. So I saw such a need for for those dogs to get the behavioral work that they needed. And I realized that that I didn't even know that you can you can work with a dog on that level. And it just it it brought me to a whole new level of awareness in my animal career. So you, you start volunteering and then it kind of escalated. So when was that? I mean, how long have you been doing that to where you turned what, you know, just something that you were kind of experimenting with into your passion? It's been almost six years now. So I was right out of college and, you know, went to walk some dogs and I actually started shadowing who became my, my mentor and she taught me pretty much everything I know about behavior. And um, once I started to really spend more time one-on-one with these dogs out of the kennel, so if I would take them on a walk and we would just kind of sit outside together, I noticed just a completely different demeanor of the dogs. So uh, it just, it really sparked my interest that these dogs just need a decompression, that they don't need this hardcore training or, you know, anything like that, any force or or anything to reprimand them. They actually need compassion. They need understanding. And that increases their adoptability in the shelters. And once I started seeing that and becoming a part of it and shadowing, I was like, I have to get into this. Yeah. And it's such a common issue and it's a shame like you said, that it does affect their adoptability, I think is how you say it. Uh, And it's just, you know, it can definitely affect how long some of these dogs are in the system. And are you working with organizations then? Are individuals coming to you? Like, and once that happens, kind of take us through the, the steps or like the cycle of what it is exactly that you're doing. Yeah, so as of right now, I'm uh, taking private clients. So people will reach out to me uh, via email. Um, I just created a business account on Instagram, so people will DM me. I also link my professional email in there, so I'll get emails. Most of it is referrals, so that know people that have worked with me before. And what I'll do is I'll then set up a date and we'll set up a consultation. And during the consultation, I'll take most of my notes, I'll assess the dog's behavior, and uh, I'll kind of get a feel of their lifestyle. That's more of the training 
methodology that I use that it's more than just the obedience. It's more, it's the lifestyle. So I want to make sure the dogs are being, are fully enriched throughout the day. I want to make sure the owners are aware of how important mental stimulation is for the dogs that suffer with certain types of anxiety, because what happens is in a shelter, their nervous system is always at an all time high. So their stress hormones are always elevated. So when they come into a home, and they're confused, they're not really sure where to be or where to go. And depending on the, the home, it could be a large family, kids. So the dog just gets so overwhelmed. And that's when they'll reach out to me and say, hey, I've been seeing some really weird behaviors going on, you know, whether the dog's hiding or nipping or whatever it may be. So I really kind of try and get into um, the human lifestyle too, to make sure that they're understanding that their energy and their what they're providing for the dogs every day is what's going to overall help the longevity of their behavioral health. And what are some common issues that you're seeing? Maybe that, you know, as a pet owner, you know, just people aren't aware of like, are you seeing some common recurring things? Or is it different things throughout? Yeah, so I mean, for the most part, I see a lot of the same things. It kind of depends on the dog. But um, one of the most common things that I deal with is leash reactivity. So dogs that will bark and lunge or have any sort of negative reaction to another dog passing by on the leash. And that's because there's so much miscommunication between the human and the dog. So whatever we're feeling on our side of the leash kind of travels down. So our nervousness, our anxiety, it kind of travels down to them and they feel that. So uh, the dogs are, like I said, already kind of nervous and scared and and don't really know, um, you know, what to, they don't really have a clear understanding of of what the rules are, um, I guess you can say. So um, some dogs that are very dog friendly will actually try and approach another dog who maybe isn't dog friendly. And because there's so much tension on a leash, it gets misinterpreted as threatening body language or any type of confrontation. So it's really about understanding the dog in front of you and their particular body language and trying to understand what it is that they're trying to express. So reactivity is never for no reason. They're either telling you they wanna go say hi to a dog and it's stemmed from frustration, or they're saying, I need space. And you know, I'm trying to create this space now by taking the matter into my own hands because the subtle body language that we missed on the leash kind of enhances their defensive mechanisms, I guess you can say. That's really interesting. And it's one of those things I can really tell that you're just like there are different types of dog trainers that, you know, you've definitely done, you're constantly a student of this and and whatnot. You're seeing clients all the time. What kind of training, I know you briefly talked about this before the call, but And this is personally something I'm interested in, too, because I have a dog that I'm close with that's fear based aggression. What kind of training do you do? Are there like online webinars? Like, do you have anything that you do yourself like or that you teach people? How does that work? Where can we find more research about that, actually? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question, um, because unfortunately, dog training is not regulated. So anybody can pretty much say, hey, I'm a dog trainer. I've worked with dogs for you know my whole life. And, and uh, that can be a bit dangerous because they're using these tools that, that have a quick fix, such as the prong collars, the shock collars, the choke chains, that people get so desperate because they're, they can't manage their dog's reactive behavior that they'll resort to these trainers, giving them this false advice saying that these tools will help your dog feel more confident but in reality it's just suppressing the behavior and it's just going to cause more stress more anxiety more confusion because you're punishing a learner and someone who's learning something for the first time should never be punished so it's really about instead of correcting them for what we you know don't want them to do it's about reinforcing what we do want them to do so I caught on to that very quickly and with that being said I ended up I wanted to educate myself as best as I could. So I started off with doing a basic certification animal behavior college, which is an online certification program where it's six months online, you take tests and uh, you read a bunch of material. 
and then it's uh, another six months hands-on. So I actually, um, I went from volunteering at this animal shelter to becoming a staff member and handling some of the more difficult dogs. So I actually got most of my hands-on experience working there, which I was very fortunate for. And my mentor at the shelter actually ended up being my mentor for the program. So it just, it worked out really well where I had everything I needed right in front of me. And it's really important that anyone who's interested in this field start uh, working at an animal shelter because that's where you'll see most of the behavior issues. That's what will you where you'll see the raw emotion and distress from these dogs that really that need that structure and that uh, that sort of decompression and patience. So from there, I ended up getting enough hours to take my professional certification, which is what I am now certified professional dog trainer, knowledge assessed. So I had to log a bunch of hours. I taught group classes. I did one-on-one. I shadowed professional trainers, behavior consultants, watched a bunch of webinars, attended workshops, and I just gathered all my knowledge and tried to, you know, put it on this one sheet and then uh, sent it in and I was able to start studying for the test and uh, got a nice study guide, took the test, and luckily I passed the first time I took it. And um, so I went from certified dog trainer Like I said, it's not regulated, so I could have just stopped there, um, which some people do. And uh, I wanted to take it to that next step, even more qualified. So, and then from there, I uh, actually got what's called a fear-free certification. And that's something that is pretty new in this industry is working with dogs in a force-free, fear-free manner. And what that means is working at the dog's comfort level, knowing when to stop, uh, knowing uh, body language signals for discomfort, um, stress, anxiety, and pretty much, I mean, it's pretty simple, just giving them the break that they need and knowing when to do so will actually help speed the process of training. And you'll build so much trust that you'll be able to, the dog will get so much more confident and uh, it's, it's something that was really important to me because being a positive reinforcement based trainer, not using any aversive tools, I wanted to make sure I was fully able to handle um, these dogs in a way where they trusted me and they felt like they, instead of fearing me, they knew that I understood them. And it kind of, it really just deepened the relationship I have with training. That's so cool. I've only been to a few different rescues in person and I've talked with a bunch of people, but it seems like that'd be such a cool tool, whether it's the training or an individual coming in or a team coming in and helping out some of these rescues out. Because like you said, oftentimes, a lot of the times these people that are helping at rescues or volunteers or even the paid people at these shelters and rescues are kind of short staffed. So it would be really cool if more volunteers and training could get out there from individuals like yourself that are passionate about just really understanding the psychology of the dog. And rather than just saying, Hey, here are a bunch of shock collars, like, or whatever, you know, other terrible ways of training out there that just aren't as compassionate, I feel like. So no, that's fantastic. And where do you see this going for you? And, you know, like how has COVID changed your, your, the training? Have you seen more fear-based cases? Has it kind of lightened up with more people adopting? What's that been like? Yeah, so definitely at first, when we first had the lockdown, the shelters almost emptied out immediately. So everybody wanted a puppy. Everybody uh, wanted to take that time to to bring on a new dog in their home, which is awesome and which was, was really great. At the same time, some people started going back to work. So we're seeing separation anxiety. Some people uh, who mean well and want to foster as many dogs as they can or having issues in the home with uh, reactivity and aggression and also socialization um, for the puppies, which is really, really a very crucial um, part of having a well-rounded 
emotionally regulated dog, an adult dog, is to properly socialize them when they're in that developmental period where they're really making associations with everything around them. They're learning what's good, what's not good. And it's really important that they meet not only different types of dogs and different types of people, but different environments, different places, different sounds, sites, everything. So uh, having them stay in one in one spot can be um, can be detrimental for their uh, behavioral health or mental health as well. So I have seen a, a lot more cases with the puppies that are more anxious and fearful that uh, are not um, particularly happy about greeting new people and just more on the shy and timid side, which then instinctively many people unknowingly will will reverse their intention of wanting to socialize the dog they'll kind of flood the dog with too much information at once and it's kind of like two extremes so you'll have a dog spending most of the time in home and not really getting a lot of exposure to going outside in this like big world and then now you know let's say they have a gathering outside or something now meeting all these different types of people not really having the time to, to spend to really process what's going on because everyone wants to get their hands on a puppy right away and that's actually not the proper way to greet a dog who's either being socialized or, or hasn't had a lot of socialization it's really important that the owners understand where their dog is at in their developmental um, time in their lives and uh, to socialize them by not forcing them to do something, really just allowing them to do it naturally, using their nose, um, sniffing. And uh, just because a dog sniffs you does not mean it's an invitation to pet or to hug or to play. They're just checking it out. And if you let them be and let them do that, you'll start to see that confidence start to start to build up. But yes, definitely seen a lot more anxiety since the pandemic. Yeah. And that's like you said, it's kind of a, you know, it was great in the beginning when people were adopting all these dogs, but then also, you know, separation anxiety is such a common issue and all these other factors. I've personally seen so many people just greet dogs, to just instantly, you know, pick them up and, you know, that's probably not the right way to do it. There's, uh, you know, it's not very thoughtful of the dog. You know, we're one month into 2021. What are some things that you're excited about, whether it's, you know, furthering your own education or your business? What What are some things that you're excited about um, this year that you have in the works? Yeah, so um, I actually uh, just started my own thing, Treat with Compassion, Dog Training and Behavior, and I'm building that up. So I'm really, really excited that um, in the next couple of months, I'll, I'll launch the website and I'll have a couple of my own blogs and a couple of my own handouts for people to read. And I'm really excited that I'm seeing the fear-free training environment grow so much this past year. I feel like there's just been such a wealth of knowledge that's kind of hit the kind of hit the, the internet in a way that's kind of you know, we're, we're really explaining to people the harm that this, these aversive trainers are doing for their behavioral health. So I'm just, I'm really excited to see more people educating themselves and uh, definitely looking forward to maybe collaborating with a couple of them or working with a couple of rescues and doing, um, you know, maybe some evaluations and helping with, you know, just helping to spread more awareness to what these dogs really need and to just uh, slow down with them and allow them to process the world. That's so cool. And like you said, I mean, it's it's exciting to see too, just getting to witness this firsthand myself to see that grow and people talk about that and people that are passionate about that. Where can individuals or, you know, organizations find you at? Where can they reach you at um, if they want to get in touch? Sure. So um, my Instagram page is at treat underscore dog training. And I'm in the process of putting up a couple of more videos and adding more content. So definitely find a lot of good resources on my Instagram page. You can DM me there for training inquiries. Also, my email is treat w compassion at gmail.com and i take training inquiries there as well um, and i also have a training facebook page treat with compassion dog training and behavior that also has some information on it awesome and whatever medium you're listening to right now that will be in the description below easy for you to access but 
Uh, Alex, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. And I learned a lot and definitely really grateful to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.